It's Monday, February 17, 2020. You know, we are living in the most amazing time. And we're also living in the most dangerous time in history. I was sitting back today thinking a little bit, reading a few articles, thinking uh, when the markets reopen tomorrow, how are they going to keep this all propped up? How many hundreds of billions of dollars uh, is the Fed going to have to inject this week to keep everything propped up? The U.S. economy is struggling. In fact, I believe that the United States of America is in recession right now. And I, I, I would probably bet that most of you believe the same thing. I think it's hard to argue that we're not in a recession right now. We look at what's happening in manufacturing. We see the service sector slowing down. We look at the trucking industry. We look at the freight industry. We look at the coal industry. And we look at America as a whole. What, where's the booming economy in America? What are we doing? What are we making? Um, I don't see it. I, I, I see nothing but distress with the US economy. I see people struggling. I see people working multiple jobs. I see a lot of homeless people. I see people living off credit cards. I don't see the booming US economy. I see a booming stock market, but we all know it's propped up with corporate buybacks, low rates, fake data, fake optimism, and massive injections. That's why we have a surging uh, Wall Street, a surging stock market, but it's fake. Unlike the economy, which is real, and, it, and this economy is faltering, it's struggling, it's in recession, it's not growing, we're not making anything, people don't have, you know, as, as a majority of America, we don't have people working those well-paying manufacturing jobs. Again, most of the jobs being created in America are low-wage, low-paying jobs. And this is why people continue to take on massive debt. This is why people are living with roommates. This is why people are moving back home. This is why you see four, five, six, seven cars in a driveway at a house because uh, people's half of people's uh, paychecks are going to rent or to a mortgage payment and they are struggling. This economy is 100% struggling. This stock market is surging all based on propaganda, all based on an illusion, all based on the central bank, the Federal Reserve, injecting massive amounts of money into this Ponzi scheme to keep it going. And I do not get how people cannot see what is going on. China is the world's largest oil importer in the world. Tanker upon tanker upon tanker are sitting off the coast of China now because China is not consuming oil like they once were. Oil cargoes are stranded off the country's coast and they're stranded all along the coast of Asia. And what we're seeing take place in China right now, factories shutting down, supply chains breaking, the, 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 the serious situation that is taking place over there, this could set the entire globe into recession. OPEC slashed its oil demand forecast last week. Most of you know that. Goldman Sachs cut its oil price target by $10 to $53 a barrel for the year. As a result of a demand shock this is set to collapse Chinese oil consumption by 20% or as much as 4 million barrels a day. Do you not think that this is going to have massive repercussions globally, economically? Do, you, do people not see what is happening? Oil consumption is collapsing because uh, China's economy is plunging and its industrial hubs remain shuttered. I don't know how this is going to get fixed or when it's going to get fixed, but I believe when we start seeing shortages of pharmaceuticals, shortages of medicine, shortages of all those cheap products at Walmart, when they're not on the shelves, people are going to realize that uh, something is going on. You know, we're, we're so inclined to just go to the store and just expect it to be there. You, you, you need a product, you go to the store, it's on the shelf, you need some batteries, you go to the store, you get them off the shelf, you got it. Um, you know, we're so uh, spoiled in, in a sense that everything is at our fingertips, right? What happens if your world changes and the food isn't in the store or, or, or those, those cheap goods 
aren't at Walmart. They're not at the store. And, and what would people do here if they couldn't get goods and, and services? The, we start seeing food shortages. What would the typical American do? Uh, this could be coming. I'm not saying that it is, but I don't see how it isn't. Um, when you see supply chains breaking, factories closing, uh, how how are those products going to get to America? And when we look at what America buys from China, uh, the amount of technology that we're buying from China, electrical goods, uh, billions and billions of dollars of, of electrical goods, generators, uh, you know, really advanced equipment. What happens if we can't get that? If we can't get the, you, you know, the, the very expensive high-end te technological uh, supplies all the way down to pharmaceuticals, down to the cheap Walmart goods. What happens? I mean, you know, we have to understand that being dependent on other, other countries puts us in a very, very bad position when we are dependent on other countries to make our things. Uh, when something like this happens in China or another country and we no longer can get uh, these products, that puts us in a very, very bad position. Yeah. I did a video last week. One in four renters is spending more than half their paycheck on housing. And I go back to this article because when I look at the situation in China, when I look at the global economic slowdown, when I look at the recession that is currently taking place right now here in America, a recession that is going to turn into a depression, if not a complete economic meltdown. I look at these people the one in four uh, who are spending half their money on rent. What are these people going to do when this collapse hits America? If you're one of these people, you better start thinking today what you're going to do. No one is prepared. People have been walking a tightrope financially for way too long. And something is going to push these people off the rope and they're going to be in very, very big trouble. If you're one of these people, you really need to really think about your future. And this is where we make sacrifices. Maybe you have to live in a smaller apartment. Maybe you have to live in a studio. Maybe you have to move back home. Maybe you need a roommate. Right now, People are spending so much money on rent, auto loans, college tuition. They have no money for an emergency, no emergency fund. And these people are walking a financial tightrope. And if you're one of these people, you better really think about the future. This is no joke. We are going to see uh, really serious events unfold economically here in America. If somebody tells you that this is a good economy, if, if they tell you this is a great economy, if they tell you this is the best economy uh, in history, ask them this, how come one in three American workers are running out of money before payday? That doesn't typically happen in a booming economy. That doesn't even happen in a decent economy. People are financially stressed out in America. They are resorting at this point to payday loans, legalized loan sharking, three, 400 percent. They're resorting to credit cards. 25 percent of Americans now uh, need credit cards to survive. They have been slammed by overdraft fees as their economic well-being quickly deteriorates. And there is no doubt that people's standard of living their economic well-being is deteriorating without a doubt. I see this thing going in a negative direction, not a positive direction, and I don't need to look at a surging stock market to tell me if things are good or bad. I can look out my window, I can take a drive in my car, I can take a walk around the block, and I can tell you exactly what I see. Whether I'm in Nevada, whether I'm in Arizona, whether I'm in California, what I like to do is take a camera with me and report to you guys what's happening. And I think most of you would agree because I read the comments and you're reporting the same exact thing that I'm seeing here in Southern California, that I'm seeing in Las Vegas, that I'm seeing in, in Arizona. You're reporting to me, whether it's in the Midwest, the East Coast, it's all over. Now, look, there are exceptions to the rules. There are areas that are doing quite well, but a majority, majority 
of America is struggling. The economy as a whole is struggling. This is not a good economy. This is a very bad economy. 42% of this country is struggling with paying their bills. And when I read articles like this, when I look at statistics like this, it makes me think if 42% of this country is struggling to pay their bills, what is it going to look like in the bad times? If these are the good times right now, the good times, 42% of this country is struggling to pay its bills in the good times. What will the bad times look like? How are people going to pay their bills in the bad times? What's equally concerning is this massive gap of wealth inequality. Also, opportunity inequality. You know, we take uh, wealth inequality, opportunity inequality. We take people who are struggling, frustrated, and then we take the 1%, the money trickling at the very top. This really is a ticking time bomb because it seems to me like people at some point are gonna be so frustrated, so broke, struggling, uh, so desperate, and they're gonna see the 1% at the very top getting all the money. And to me, uh, this, this becomes a very social issue. This is when we start seeing social events unraveling uh, in the streets of America because it's not a fair game when 1% at the very top of the pyramid are getting all that helicopter money, all the bailout, all the opportunity, all the wealth, when none of that money, none of that wealth or opportunity is trickling down into the real economy. Nobody, none of these elite are leaving any meat on the bone for the citizens here in the United States of America. The middle class is being wiped out. The 1% at the top are getting all the help, all the wealth, and all the opportunity. And if this continues, how are people going to react when their families are starving, their kids are starving, they're losing their houses, they're losing their cars, they're losing their jobs, they're losing any wealth that they have left, it's gone, while the, the elite at the very top laugh all the way to the bank. How's that all gonna play out? Be very curious to know, please comment down below. Will we see social repercussions one day in America because of the wealth and opportunity inequality in America? Or are people just gonna be peasants? Are they gonna accept it and just deal with it? While the 1% float around on 500 foot, foot uh, yachts and uh, $100 million jet airplanes. State-backed economist says China must delay trade deal commitments. The market, as you know, was propped up for over a year on this whole phase one deal with China. Uh, every day, all we heard about is we're getting, we're getting closer to a phase one deal. China wants a deal, phase one, it's gonna happen and it, it just continued to make the stock market surge. All of it was all dependent on the phase one trade deal with China. Now, it looks like the phase one deal will be delayed. China will need to delay its commitment to purchase an additional, additional $200 billion of American goods and services. So what does that do for America? Uh, is that gonna be more problems for US farmers? What does that do for the stock market? Again, I don't think any of this has anything to do with the stock market. The only thing uh, that has anything to do with the stock market, the end all be all is the Federal Reserve, the central bank, as long as they continue the injections, infections don't matter, phase ones don't matter, uh, global economies don't matter. Look, we, we're gonna go straight into a depression while the stock market goes up. And I could, I could see that happening. I mean, just think, we're in a recession right now. We, this, this economy is one of the worst ever. We're not making anything. Uh, now we've got oil prices collapsing. What do you think that's gonna do to, to uh, our energy production here in America, our fracking, uh, our, our refineries, uh, our shale industry. Uh, we know our coal industry is literally in a depression now. What is this gonna do uh, to the energy industry here in America now that things are collapsing in China? China buying 20% less oil uh, because of its economic problems and the situation taking place over there. This is gonna have 
a, 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 a huge ramification here in America. But it doesn't matter because the Fed will just come in. It's the buyer and seller of last resort. They will just come in and inject a trillion dollars, whatever it takes. They're going to do whatever it takes. Wall Street Journal, dealerships give car buyers some advice. Just stop paying your loan. Uh, this is very interesting. Uh, this this is the economy today. I mean, when we look uh, at, at at these creative exotic subprime home loans that got us into the 2008 crash, and we see it coming back today. We we, we know that subprime loans are coming back into into the housing market. These exotic creative loans are coming back into to the housing market. But when we look at what's happening in the auto market, it's insane. Can't afford your car. Don't trade it in. This is what one dealership told a woman. Don't trade it in. The, the dealership says, just stop paying on it while we sell you a new one. Let it get repossessed. The dealer isn't on the hook. It's the borrower or lender who's on the hook. The dealership makes more uh, 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 with the financing, arranging the financing, than they do selling the vehicle. So, you know, I've said in the past, I've had friends who've gone in and buy cars, never even asked to uh, confirm that they, that they even had a job, that they were even uh, employed. Uh, no, no verification, no, no, no employment ver verification, no income verification. And people, you know, didn't believe me, but I've had two people now go in, buy cars uh, without having to verify income or that they even worked where they said that they worked. In 2018, 300,000 vehicles were repossessed within a 12 month period. 2018 was part of the booming record economy, yet 300,000 people had their cars re repossessed in a 12 month period. That's up 17% from 2014. One fifth of people who had their cars repossessed take out a car loan within a year of the repossession. Can you believe this? People, once, once a person gets their car repossessed, within 12 months, they're getting another car. They're getting another loan to buy another car. Um, this, is, uh, uh, this is all just another ticking time bomb. We have people buying houses today at ultra low uh, mortgage rates. Uh, putting the bare minimum down. We have people buying cars that cannot afford to be buying cars. Um, this, this is going to be really, really ugly. We are no doubt living in, in one of the most dangerous times ever. We are now in a world economy. So what happens in Europe will, will affect us. What happens in Latin America affects us. What happens in China affects us. If America goes down, the entire world's going down. If China goes down, same thing. Uh, everybody's going down with them. If Europe goes down, everybody's going down. Uh, we look at the pension system. We have a US pension shortfall of at least $5 trillion right now. CalPERS, the biggest pension in the country right here in California, uh, is $1 trillion underwater. Here's a few things to think about. When we look at some of the economies, here's, here's just a list. The U.S. economy is going down. It's broke, $23.2 trillion of debt. Japan, massive trouble, they're going down. Europe going down. South America going down. Venezuela going down. Zimbabwe going down. And you think that we are not going to see an economic collapse in America? You think that the entire world financially is going down, yet we're not going to feel any pain here in America, that this is just going to correct itself. It's just going to go away because your friend at work or your friend at church told you everything's going to be okay, that this could never happen. Everybody is going down. And if you are not preparing for this, you are very, very foolish. Rob Kiyosaki, I watched a show uh, with Rob Kiyosaki yesterday, and I watched it about a week ago. I watched it twice because he, he made some just excellent, excellent points. He says that right now, and remember, Rob Kiyosaki uh, wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad, sold 41 million copies. Uh, the guy is brilliant. He knows what's going on. But he said this, right now, you want to be small. And what he means by that is you need to be cutting back, okay? This is a guy that has been buying 
uh, gold and silver since 1971, 73, somewhere in there. And this is a guy who hasn't sold any of it. He's just stockpiled millions of dollars of gold and silver since the early 70s. And this is a guy that's saying right now is the time to be small. You, need to make, you may need to cut back on some things. Maybe you don't need to be driving a $50,000 or $80,000 car. Maybe you drive a $15,000 car. You don't need a five-bedroom house. Maybe you need a two-bedroom apartment. This is the time to be running lean. This is the time to play it safe. He says you can't change the world, but you can change yourself. And we have to remember that. Like, like I make videos and, and I try to wake up as many people as possible. And I think with these videos and with the great comments below, we have woken up a lot of people. But at the end of the day, what matters is what you're doing and what I'm doing. And it, we're not gonna be able to save the world. We're not gonna change the world. We're not gonna stop what's coming to the world. But what we can do is we can make a change ourselves and prepare for what is coming in the world. So if we need to cut out the $5 coffees, if we need to cut out going out to dinner, if we need to um, you know, cut out entertainment, uh, cut out going to lunch every day. Uh, maybe we don't have a $1,200 cell phone. Maybe we don't have a $3,000 computer. Maybe we just have to cut down a little bit uh, and make those sacrifices, okay? That we can do, okay? You and I can cut out a coffee and go buy an ounce of silver instead of two mochas, okay? We can go buy an ounce of silver instead of going out to lunch tomorrow. We can do that. That doesn't mean that everybody else is going to do that. More than likely, most of the world's not going to do that, especially here in America, because people here in America live in a bubble. And at the end of the day, we can't worry about everybody else. At the end of the day, it comes down to you and I. we got to worry about ourselves and our families. So right now, we may not be able to save our neighbor, our friends, other, our, our family members, our, our friends and associates, but we can save ourselves. And right now, you need to be getting knowledgeable with the events that are taking place. You need to be getting educated. You need to be getting awake with what is taking place. Not worry about what your friends think, your family members think, your associates think. You need to worry about what you think and how awake and how knowledgeable you are to the events that are coming because knowledge will save you. And if you have knowledge and you are educated, then you will prepare. You will be making plans. You will have... Uh, tangible hard assets. You will have an emergency fund, uh, fund of cash. You will have preparations of food and water and medications put away. The rainy day is coming, ladies and gentlemen. And here's the thing. If you don't know any of this, if you don't know anything, you will be screwed. So right now, you better wake up and you better get educated. You better get awake and you better know what's going on. Because the people who don't know anything those are the people who lose, those are the people who are screwed, and those are the people who are not going to survive what is coming. Have a great day. Please give this, give this video a thumbs up, share it with everybody. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. Get this video out and get prepared. God bless you. Talk very soon.